Summit Hydraulics. Kubota, rear remote, and front third function valve kit, installation video. The remote valve kit is designed to work with the following Kubota models. The tractor shown in this video might not match your exact model. The following parts are included with your assembly. For any replacement parts, or hardware, please refer to contact at summit-hydraulics.com. Check the assembly manual for a complete parts list. The following tools are recommended for this installation. We recommend using a torque wrench when tightening, instead of an impact wrench. Please torque to the specifications shown in the instructions. Initial preparations. Before you begin the installation, please make sure to read the instructional manual thoroughly, as it contains important safety warnings and assembly tips. The following safety steps need to be followed prior to installation of this valve kit. First, park the tractor on a flat surface. Place gear shift lever in park. Turn off engine and remove the ignition key. Second, place chocks in front and behind tractor's left rear wheel. After the tractor is secured, locate the hardware and lubricate all threads and O-rings with hydraulic fluid. We recommend that all Summit Hydraulics products be installed by an experienced professional. Step 1. Initial Assembly Begin by locating the manifold side angle channels. Next, position the ROPS D03 valve bracket underneath both channels, matching the end holes. The bracket can be installed on either the left or right side. Secure the bracket using 4, 5 16 by 18 hex bolts, 4, 5 16 inch washers, and 4 5 16 by 18 lock nuts. Matching the end holes, push the bracket into place, as shown. Fully tighten the hardware using an open end wrench. Next, secure the manifold to both end channels, using the provided hardware. Partially tighten the hardware using an Allen wrench. Install two hex socket plugs, number 10 SAE ORB male adapter, into both P and T ports on the side of the manifold. Please note, the number 10 SAE ORB male adapter can be installed on either side of the P and T ports on the manifold. Fully tighten using an Allen wrench. Take care not to over tighten. Next, install one hex socket plug, number 6 SAE ORB male adapter, into the front hole on the valve manifold. Fully tighten using an Allen wrench. After attaching the plugs, install 3, number 8 SAE ORB male adapters, to the valve manifold, as shown. Fully tighten using an open end wrench. Take care not to over tighten. Next, install 3, number 8 SAE ORB male adapters, into the valve manifold. Fully tighten using an open end wrench. Locate the side of the manifold, and install 2, half inch, JIC male by number 10 SAE ORB male adapters, into the valve manifold. Fully tighten using an open end wrench. Take care not to over tighten. Next, install 6, half-inch female quick couplers to the half SAE threaded adapters on the manifold. Fully tighten the couplers using an open end wrench. Take care not to over tighten. Finally, fully tighten the bolts connected to the valve manifold to secure the valve manifold onto the bracket. Fully tighten the bolts on both sides using an Allen wrench. Step 1 is now complete. Step 2, Valve Installation Begin by locating the Tractor Rollover Protection Safety ROPS, bar. This ROPS bar can be located towards the rear of the tractor. The valve mounting bracket can be installed on either side of the ROPS bar. We recommend installing it on the side with easy access to the power beyond port or high pressure hydraulic coupler. Next, locate the fully assembled manifold. Locate the provided hardware from the hydraulic kit and install the hardware through the ROPS D03 valve bracket. Insert two bolts through the slots, and two bolts through the drilled holes, as shown. You are now ready to mount the manifold assembly onto the ROPS bar. Choose a location on the ROPS bar that you wish to attach the manifold assembly. 
place the manifold assembly onto the ROPS bar, with the bar between both bolts on the bracket, and place the assembly with the P and T ports facing down. Next, locate the clamp bracket for the ROPS D03 valve bracket, and mount the hydraulic valve assembly onto the ROPS using the provided hardware. Locate the provided hardware from the hydraulic kit. Fully tighten the hardware using an open-end wrench. Take care not to over-tighten. Next, locate the valve assembly. There is a cardboard plate on the bottom of the valve assembly, held in place by four plastic inserts. Remove the inserts, and discard the cardboard plate. Repeat these steps, and remove the cardboard plate for all valve assemblies. Finally, install four solenoid control valves onto the valve manifold. Secure the valves using the provided bolts. Fully tighten the bolts using an Allen wrench. Torque the solenoid control valve bolts to 2 foot-pounds. Repeat these steps, and attach all remaining valves. Step 2 is now complete. Step 3, Pressure and Return Line Installation. Please note, if you have not already, place chocks in front and behind tractor's left rear wheel. Loosen the lug nuts on the right rear wheel. Do not remove the lug nuts yet. Lift the tractor to a safe height using the recommended factory lift points. Make sure to place safety jack stands where the factory recommends. Once tractor is safely lifted, remove the lug nuts and the right rear wheel. Follow factory procedures to remove the inner fender to expose all of the hydraulic lines. Begin by locating the power beyond port on the selective control valve, and the proper return to tank port. A steel line will be connected from the power beyond port on the SCV, and routed to the return to tank port. Once the line is located, remove this line. Next, attach a hose line from the power beyond port on the SCV, to the P port on the manifold. Route the hose as required. Locate a hydraulic oil line with a half-inch female JIC, and thread the half-inch female JIC onto the half-inch JIC male, by number 10 SAEORB male adapter. Locate the 90-degree elbow, 3 8 inch JIC male by 3 8 inch JIC female. Thread the adapter onto the hydraulic oil lines with half-inch female JIC. Fully attach both hose ends using an open-end wrench, and take care not to over-tighten. Next, attach a hose line from the return to tank port, to the T port on the manifold. Locate the hydraulic oil line with half-inch female JIC, 90-degree half-inch JIC female. Thread the half-inch female JIC onto the half-inch JIC male by number 10 SAEORB. Fully attach the hose ends using an open-end wrench, and take care not to over-tighten. Finally, using the provided zip ties, secure the pressure and tank lines to minimize movement during tractor operation. Add zip ties as required. Double check, and make sure the hydraulic lines are tightly secured. Step 3 is now complete. Step 4, Switch Box Installation. Begin by locating the switch box bracket. The switch box bracket is adjustable to allow for proper clearance, and user preference. The switch box bracket can be mounted together using two bolts, and two nuts. Choose the length that best suits your tractor. Fully tighten the hardware using an open-end wrench. Take care not to over-tighten. Next, locate the provided bolt and washer hardware from the hydraulic kit. Attach the hardware through the ROP switch box clamp bracket. You are now ready to mount the bracket. Locate the ROPS frame on the tractor. This ROPS can be located towards the rear of the tractor. Locate the clamp bracket for the ROPS switch box bracket, and insert the bracket to the ROPS switch bracket assembly. Choose the location, and height, that best suits your tractor. Locate the provided hardware from the hydraulic kit. Secure the clamp bracket to the ROPS bar using the provided hardware. Fully tighten the hardware using an open-end wrench. Next, locate the switch box from the hydraulic kit. Position the switch box above the ROPS switch box bracket. Install the switch box to the ROPS switch box bracket using the two bolts, and two nuts. Locate the provided hardware from the hydraulic kit. The bolts go through the top, and the nuts on the bottom. Fully tighten the hardware using an open-end wrench. After securing the switch box, route the harness cable, and battery cables, around the tractor as needed. The battery terminals go to the front of the tractor, and attach to the battery. Properly route the wiring, and use zip ties to secure the routing in place. Take care not to pinch or cut the cables. Next, connect the plastic Deutsch connectors on the wiring harness to the valve bodies, and attach the harness Deutsch connector to the switch box Deutsch connector. 
the connector should easily connect and clip in place. Step 4 is now complete. Step 5, Joystick Switch Installation. Begin by removing the existing knob from end of the control lever. Rotate and remove the knob. Next, attach the joystick handle switch. Using the provided Allen wrench, loosen the four tightening bolts on the side of the joystick handle switch. The joystick bottom has an adjustable bushing and can be adjusted as needed to obtain a rough fit. Slide the bushing over the control lever and tighten the bolts on the side of the joystick handle switch. Orient the handle as needed that works best for you and then fully tighten. Run the wire alongside the control lever and feed the wire through the boot. Slide the boot off and feed all wiring through the boot. Slide the wiring down through the loader valve cover. Take care not to pinch or cut the cables. Next, connect the plastic Deutsch connectors on the wiring harness to the valve body. There are ports on the valve body. Secure and clip the connectors in place. The connector should easily connect and clip in place. Properly route the wiring and use zip ties to secure the routing in place. Next, attach the harness Deutsch connector to the switch Deutsch connector. The connector should easily fit and clip into place. After all wiring is in place, you will need access to the battery. Remove the front cover as needed. Finally, connect the power and ground cables to the battery. Connect the black ground terminal end to the battery's negative post and connect the red positive terminal end to the battery's positive post. Tighten as needed. Step 6. Coupler Bracket Installation Begin by locating the hydraulic coupler bracket. Install two 3 8 inch JIC male by 3 8 inch JIC bulkhead into the mid-mount bracket. Fully tighten the hardware using an open-end wrench. Next, install two number 6 SAE slash ORBO rings onto the two 3 8 inch JIC male by 3 8 inch JIC bulkheads. After the O-rings are in place, install two 3 8 inch ISO B male couplers onto the two 3 8 inch JIC male by 3 8 inch JIC bulkheads. Finally, locate the mid mount bracket. Install two 1 quarter inch by 20 by 1 inch hex bolts through the hydraulic coupler bracket. Install the mid mount bracket onto the hydraulic coupler bracket. Secure the two brackets together using two 1 quarter inch flange lock nuts. Fully tighten the hardware using an open end wrench. Torque the bolts to 12 foot pounds. Step 6 is now complete. Step 7 Mid Mount Bracket Installation. Begin by removing the platform carriage bolt on the right hand side of the tractor. Attach the mid mount bracket assembly to the existing hole on the machine. Secure the bracket assembly using a socket head screw and flange nut. The bolt should face upward. Torque the bolt to 20 foot pounds. Step 7 is now complete. Step 8, third function hose installation. Begin by installing two 3 8 inch JIC mail by number 8 SAE slash ORB mail onto the valve manifold P and T ports. Fully tighten as needed using an adjustable wrench. Route the two hoses with 3 8 inch JIC male 90 degree adapters and 3 8 inch JIC female adapters underneath the tractor. Be sure to follow the steel line and route away from the wheels as shown. Install two 3 8 inch JIC male by 90 degree 3 8 inch JIC female adapters onto the two 3 8 inch JIC male by number 8 SAE slash ORB male adapters on the manifold. Continue to route the female adapters towards the mid mount bracket. Connect the two 3 8 inch JIC female adapters to the mid mount bracket with two 3 8 inch JIC male by 3 8 inch JIC bulkheads. Fully tighten both hoses and tighten the hardware using an open end wrench. Step 8 is now complete. Step 9 Cross Beam Coupler Mount. Begin by locating the loader cross beam coupler bracket. Install two 3 8 inch JIC male by 3 8 inch JIC bulkheads onto the loader cross beam coupler bracket. Next, install two number 6 SAE slash ORB O-rings onto the two 3 8 inch JIC male by 3 8 inch JIC bulkheads. Install one 3 8 inch ISO B male coupler and one 3 8 inch ISO B female coupler. Fully tighten using an open end wrench. 
Next, attach the quick coupler mounting bracket to the right side of the loader arm crossbeam. Utilize the U-bolt to tighten the quick coupler mounting bracket to the loader arm crossbeam using the two U-bolt nuts. Route the A and B work line hoses along the loader arm and through the loader loop bracket to the quick coupler mounting bracket. Locate the two hydraulic lines with 3 8 inch JIC female ends. Install two 90 degree elbows, 3 8 inch JIC male by 3 8 JIC female onto the two 3 8 inch JIC female. On the opposite ends, install two 3 8 inch JIC male by number 6 SAE slash ORB male onto the two 3 8 inch JIC female. Locate the two 3 8 inch ISO B female couplers. Install both couplers onto the two hydraulic lines, 3 8 inch JIC female. Route the hydraulic lines as needed, and connect the two 3 8 inch ISO B female couplers onto the two 3 8 inch ISO B male couplers. Connect the 90 degree elbows, 3 8 inch JIC male by 3 8 inch JIC female on the A and B work line hoses to the two 3 8 inch JIC male by 3 8 inch JIC bulkheads on the quick coupler cross beam bracket. Secure the hydraulic hoses with zip ties as needed. Congratulations! Installation of the Kubota, rear remote, and front function valve kit is now complete. You may now proceed and do an operation check. Upon completion of installation, ensure all connections are tight and secure. Operate the hydraulics using the two-button joystick. After hoses and cylinders are full of hydraulic fluid, check the hydraulic fluid levels of your machine. If low, add hydraulic fluid. Do not use your new valve kit until it has been fully assembled and inspected for correct performance in accordance with the instructional manual. Enjoy your new Kubota rear remote and front third function valve kit. Brought to you by Summit Hydraulics.